Welcome to Hopkinton Coffee Break, your home for current community talk with Patricia Duart, Darlene Hayes, and Connie Wright. Hello, welcome to our coffee break. Today we're here with Ann Matina, who we'll talk about and introduce, but um, also want to say a, a shout out to Connie, who couldn't be with us today. Her mom fell in Florida, and she had to rush out and, and uh, fly to her. Mom's doing well, but uh, so Connie, thinking about you. But thanks for coming, well, Ann. thanks for having me. Yeah. I appreciate it. To yes. folks who don't know Ann, Ann's a resident of Hopkinton, been here about as long as I have, 20 years or so. And uh, just have gotten to know you in the community through all the good things that you're doing. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Thanks. So many people may know Anne from being the uh, president of the Historical Society. Yes. So we'll just tell us a little bit about you. What brought you to Hopkinton, and how did you get so involved with things? Well, I, what brought us to Hopkinton is we wanted to move a little bit closer to my husband's parents, who were in Mar Marlboro. Mm -hmm. That's where my husband grew up, and. He says all the time he can't believe that he lives in Hopkinton because when he was a kid, <laughs> Hopkinton was very small, very rural. Mm -hmm. It's ve we're very different from right. from what it is now. This is a raising me metropolitan, right? Yes. Right. <laughs> <laughs> without so, a drive-through, <laughs> <Right. laughs> <Right. laughs> drive still without a drive-through. Right. So, um, so we moved out here and um, we lived on Claflin Street, mm -hmm. um, it, which is right behind the town hall. And my house, the house we lived in was very old, but the deed said on it, um, when it was built, it said sometime before 1920. I thought, <laughs> sometime before 1920. How vague, could you be more yes. specific? <laughs> yeah, could, we, could you be more specific? So one day I went up to the library to see if they had any um, information, city directories, anything like that. I could kind of try to date the mm -hmm. house. And at the time, they still call it this, but they had this room they called the treasure room um, in the research area. And I walked in there and I thought I was in heaven. It was just filled with all of this Hopkinton artifacts, records, maps, mm -hmm. all of this wonderful stuff. But at that time, it, none of it was organized or, or you didn't know where anything was. And I spent a few very happy hours in there. <laughs> I really enjoy local history. Mm. I really love it. And I think it's really important part, especially in New England, I think it's so much mm. important part of who we are as citizens. And um, found out my house was actually, the original house on our lot was burnt down in, the 1882 fire, mm. and then this one. That's the one that took out Town Hall? Yes. Mm. Okay. Yes. okay. It was right, it's literally uh, one Claflin is right behind Town Hall. Okay. It's the strip of woods there behind the mm -hmm. parking lot, okay. and then one Claflin is right there. Mm -hmm. So that, uh, that house was built about 1905. Mm -hmm. I did finally date it, so that was good. <laughs> that gave wow. me some information. <laughs> and I just, I don't know, I just loved it. And I, I got involved with, um, downtown revitalization when they first appointed that committee mm -hmm. uh, probably about 10 or 12 years ago um, and you know we worked on things like at the time lighting outside the town hall cleaning up the front of the town hall and and, and that kind of thing that brick wall that went that in brick it, wall. Yeah, yeah stuff like that yeah it was really you know it was good and we started the first holiday stroll, mm -hmm. oh. um, and it was just very uh, laid back. It was very, uh, you know, I just knocked on everybody's door and, <laughs> and said, would you like to do this up and down Main Street? And everyone said, yes, let's do it. And, you know, uh, of course, Hopkinton Drug has always had their holiday right. mm -hmm. event. So we did we wanted to do it on the same day as santa claus coming to the common and and the drugstore event and everything and everyone jumped right in and said yes we'd love to do it and i went to I, hca and, and that was at that time it was esl uh, esl and they had the old-fashioned carolers yes. coming around they Aww. walked up and down the street and wow. yeah it was great it really was nice and i think we did it maybe two or three years mm. and then it kind of petered out mm -hmm. um so i'm so thrilled that they got it you know the, the yeah. chambers got it going and again yeah and actually it's tomorrow and yes. come to think of it. Yeah. and um there's a lot of businesses involved and there's a this year just like hollison does there's a pass port and as you go to different businesses and get them stamped um, I think you have to get to 15 participating businesses and um, get a stamp turned it in 
and they're pulling four of them for five hundred dollar cash prizes. I think that's wow. awesome. And, but yeah, yeah, it's tomorrow, yes. and this is all because you started it years ago. <laughs> and, and this wow. year's is a co-run. I mean, it's the Hoppy and Chamber of Commerce doing it, but the right. co-chairs have been um, Kelly Grill, yes. who was part of ESL yes. and one of the one, one of, of the, the founders, carolers right? at the, the time, oh, dressed right? up at the time, <laughs> and uh, Christina Morrissey, who is vice president of the chamber and yeah. head of Unibank in Hoppington, yeah. and who will be president of the chamber come June. Oh, that's wow. great! That's, that's so great. great. Yeah, the, I didn't know that yes. you were you were part of the origination yes. of this. So that's yeah, well, it was always about kind of getting people to appreciate what was there exactly. in the center of town. Um, because we really do have some important historic things there. Mm -hmm. um, and then eventually I found my way to the his history. Well, the, I got involved with the Historical Society on the 300th anniversary. Mm -hmm. We did a historic house and, gar and the garden tour together. Okay. So it was the 300th anniversary committee, um, which I was on, and then... Um, the garden club and the women's club okay so the three organizations put that on and it was really successful so let's pull back back so you mentioned the historic <laughs> site the garden club and the women's club and we're going to get into your new endeavor now right all three of these are also nonprofits in town yes yes, yes. and um, this is the season of giving so let's go on to what you now have created for 2018. well well as as you can imagine a nonprofit, small nonprofits that are member mm -hmm. dues driven, such as the three organizations, Garden Club, Women's Club, Historical Society, and others, mm -hmm. we are totally self funded. I mean, we have to get memberships, donations, grants, if right. we can get grants to keep going. And the Historical Society has the added. Um, both our pride and joy, but also our expense, mm -hmm. is our building. Yes. We, we own that building, and mm -hmm. it's a 150-year-old Hopkinton schoolhouse. Mm. And, well, it'll be 150 years in, uh, 19, in 2020. Oh. It was built in 1870. Wow. So you can mm -hmm. imagine, just like anybody who owns an old house, right. there's a lot upkeep, of maintenance and upkeep yes. and all of that. And I think sometimes, I was even confused about this when I first came to Hopkinton. I kind of thought that the town was involved somehow, you in know, helping the, the, take care of it. In the I government. actually assumed until you just said that, that the yeah. town maintained the historical No, site. no, no, we have to do it all. That's so we have to raise wow. all the money for it and, and um, you know, so it's, it's an ongoing project. Yeah. You have yeah. to constantly be on the, on the go with that. Mm -hmm. So last year I signed us up for, just to register us for Giving Tuesday. And, mm -hmm. and when you do that, it doesn't cost anything. Right. It's a really easy process. They send you all this material for social media and everything. Didn't raise one dime. Oh, <laughs> oh, one dime. oh, darn. So I thought, there is an organization, or there was. I think that it, they, they have stopped doing it now. But out in Western Mass, there was this whole thing called the Valley Gives. Mm, mm -hmm. And it's the foundation for Western Massachusetts who okay. runs this. They have, they represent if I'm not mistaken from their website, over 900, mm -hmm. not 900 charities and nonprofits mm -hmm. from all of the Pioneer Valley, you know, Spring, Springfield all the way up to That's the Vermont. To yeah, and the and mm -hmm. they were, they would have two days a year. Mm -hmm. One would be Giving Tuesday and then they do another one in May. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And all it was was exactly mm -hmm. what I ended up putting together was a portal mm -hmm. to all these sites. So you could go on and you could look through who they had mm -hmm. and decide where you wanted your money to go mm -hmm. and it went directly to those people. And the name of yours is? Hopkinton Gives. Hopkinton Gives. Yes. And, um, it's, and the website is hopkintongives.org okay. and um, we're going to leave it open. Mm -hmm. And we, you know, we launched it a few days before uh, Giving Tuesday. Mm -hmm. But we're going to leave it up live until December 31st, ah, and we're going to continue okay. to promote it. Mm -hmm. um, we, uh, we, w you know, we want to kind of get the momentum going. Mm -hmm. I finally, I've never made a website before. <laughs> <laughs> be I, job, yeah. I put it together and um, I figured the whole thing out, and then I finally the other day figured out how to track users. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there you go. So, so now yeah. I know how many people are going on and people yeah. are coming on, and mm -hmm. and then I, I did read out 
We raised um, the, uh, the Historical Society on Tuesday, on Giving Tuesday, raised a little over $600. Excellent. So mm -hmm. I thought that was a really good start. Yeah, yes, this, exactly. Know? That's wonderful. Yeah. Congratulations. And I, I know a couple of years ago, and I know Kelly and I have talked, and Tim Kildoff and mm -hmm. I have talked, is really trying to have the nonprofits and the charities in town work together more. Yes, yes. And that, you know, there are ways of enhancing what one another does. Yes. Um, and this was a great way of saying, hey, listen, here's your Chinese menu list and go pick. Right. Um, as of about two years ago, um, out of curiosity, I looked up through GuideStar, we had 27 nonprofits registered in Hoppington. Yes. Um, and you think Little Hoppington, I mean, has 27 charities, so it goes from anything from 26.2 foundations to HCA right, right. to ESA. Right, just because it yes. just yeah. goes on. So um, do you have all those? Or we have const you'll be updating or right. bringing on others We have 23. Oh, so you're, you've caught We have 23, yeah. and, mm -hmm. and everybody was approached, and for various reasons yeah. didn't. Yeah. You, you yeah. know, so, um, uh, you know, just for, uh, some some folks don't have an online giving portal. Right, right. So, um, you know. That's or, a criteria to be able to, for this yes, to work. In yes, terms of, yeah. mm -hmm. So somebody can just jump right on to PayPal and donate their but money. It, but you know, it, it, um, if there was a way that they could still be showcased, I mean, it's yes. a, so that if people wanted to do paper checks, at least they'd know of the right, chair, that the right. organization was right. in town. But yeah. that's so the awesome. And the big promotion, though, with, with Giving Tuesday and the whole season of giving and year-end giving yeah. is a lot of it doing it online. Right. It's right. supposed to be convenient and easy, and sometimes mm -hmm. there's little perks that people get when they give. Oh, oh you become a member of, you know, HCA, and you're going to get, you know, your coffee mug, or you're going to get, you know, when you join PBS. Mm -hmm. and well, I like love that. it. Yes. Working yeah. with nonprofits yes. all the time. I yes. mean, this is just a wonderful way to, you know, raise their awareness about organizations right. and help them at the same time. And our goal, you know, I think the goal next year is, mm -hmm. I think I just wanted to get it off the ground, demonstrate that it could work, mm -hmm. get people involved and excited about it. And so many people were excited about it and said, you know, this is great. Um, you know, we don't know how to get people to just donate to us without them being members. Right, That's just right. it. And these yeah. small organizations, it's usually your members that right. donate. Um, the bigger charities, you know, the uh, Michael Lisnow House, uh, mm -hmm. the Respite Center, and the Project Just Because, you know, they have big databases yes. of... Right. But, but, but when they're, but they're, when they're, but they're also taking time to share your link out, right. which has been great. I mean, yes. you know, it did cross mm -hmm. right. So like, you know, yeah. and, you know, HCA shares on their social media platforms. Right. Check out, you know, check out Hoppington Gives. Um, there's a way of giving to HCA and other charities. So they're, right. they're you know, mm -hmm. it's taking away like feeling you're competing for people's discretional right. dollars and giving, but you're community. part of a broader thing. Yep. Um, I do a lot of um, nonprofit work in the Worcester area mm -hmm. and the, uh, Greater Worcester Community Foundation does something similar where mm -hmm. you can actually meet a lot of the donors and things like that, yes. and then say, "Here, throw in your application, and we'll pass it around to all these different people." Oh wow, yeah. that's awesome. great! Absolutely. Uh, well, I hope next year we can get some sponsors. Mm -hmm. You know, a few sponsors would what would be wonderful. The Valley Gives model, which again, it was huge. It mm -hmm. was so well done. Right. Um, the Valley Gives model was. Um, had a, they did have sponsors, and they actually had things like the organization that raises the most money between you know three and five a.m. will get an extra five hundred dollars right. from from Some the sponsor, or, the sponsor, or, or something mm -hmm. like that. And you know, so we we can get a synergy, yeah, yeah, a little bit of synergy there, mm -hmm. and and mm -hmm. that's uh, what we're hoping for. Well, that yeah. is, and you the know, of course, the the website will be posted here, so yes. it'll, and this uh, tape is preserved, so you can Good. use it. Good. Yeah. For sharing the nonprofit I work with, how we launched it was, you know, it went out early in the morning, the e blast and everything else. Yes. But we were able to say, you know, we already have donors who are going to match up to the first thousand dollars we come in. Yes, and that really does motivate people to it give. Does. And it's like because of the match, I'm doing this because of the match. Yeah, and sure. we did very well on Giving Tuesday. Yes. I mean, That's we great. more than tripled like what we had expected to get. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I was thrilled going from zero contributions. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, it's we all up from there. Up. <laughs> we, we were at nearly zero last year. We, we had, had a very poor Giving Tuesday oh, last yes. year ourselves, yeah. so this was good. But don't you think, I think, too, Giving Tuesday was really promoted. Mm -hmm. in, hugely. In, hugely, especially on Facebook. Mm -hmm. yeah. that, that Facebook PayPal link and all of that, there was so much going on with that. 
that. And then, you know, with Facebook saying that they're doing a lot of matching themselves, right. and then if you donate through PayPal, the first half million dollars that came in, which honestly was made by 2 o'clock in the morning wow. on, on Giving Tuesday, mm. uh, they matched 100% up to 500000 So whatever charities got the first half million, right. they, they gave back a half wow. million dollars yeah. too. Yeah. Well, you know, but that also just speaks to the human spirit. Yes. I mean, you know, because you can have all the marketing in the world, but there's right. something that, that compels people to give money, and um, that's a wonderful thing. Yeah. You know, yeah. and it's just making it easy, yes. making it convenient yes. is uh, just all the better. Yeah. We learned today in chatting with you that you are also a college professor. Yes. I didn't know that. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's always like, you know, folks that are so active That's in why town, she was so smart you know, able to make a website. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, and even your, your uh, gravitation towards, you know, the historical work, not that yes. uh, you may teach history or not, I don't know, we'll talk about that, but... You know, I'm always amazed by people, you know, all of us have busy day jobs yes. and then do so many interesting things in town. Yes. And so tell us about your day job and well, where you um, teach and all I've that. been at Stonehill College um, in East in Massachusetts mm -hmm. for 22 years. Wow. There I've been 22 years. Here I've been 21. I, was, that's, I got that confused <laughs> a little while ago. Um, but I really, um, I'm, I teach communication studies, but the kinds of things I teach are like um, public uh, speaking mm -hmm. and then also political communication oh. and um, I do social movements um, and so I'm, I'm I do have a historic in my own research in my own yes, interest yes, yes. I like to look at public address from the early 19th and uh, 20th centuries is mm -hmm. where I kind of focus on so I am I do historical yes, work. Just in a different context. Just in a different context. Absolutely. So I'm chair of the department there, and um, it's, you know, it's, a, awesome, I love you. it. I, I really <laughs> do love Absolutely. it. I, uh, a few years ago, I, I had an opportunity to uh, take a job somewhere else. I was offered a job somewhere else as a dean. and. Mm -hmm. And it was very difficult to turn it down, but I, I just absolutely love Stonehill. It's oh, a place so where I feel, you know, a lot of commitment, mm -hmm. and um, it's, it's a place that also focuses on being involved and giving. Mm -hmm. um, that is part of their mission. It's something that our students are really involved with as well. Mm -hmm. How big is Stonehill? Up to 20, population. 2,500 okay. undergrads. All and right. we just started a new master's program in integrated marketing communication. Ah. Mm -hmm. um, so that's still small, but another grad program is opening in special education. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's growing. Oh, it's nice. growing. Wonderful. But they don't want to be too much bigger. Okay. They, they don't have a desire a to small be. Small private college. Yes. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. a pretty area of Massachusetts, yes. too. And it's a parochial yeah. college. Yes. Right? It's, it's Catholic. Yeah. Ah, the Brothers I didn't of the know Holy. that either. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. it's the Fathers of the Holy Cross. The ah. same, the same uh, order that runs Notre Dame. Okay, yeah. we okay. like to say we're the Notre Dame of the mm -hmm. East. <laughs> I they like it. to say they're the Stonehill of the Midwest. Oh, yeah. right. <laughs> oh that's wonderful. Yeah, you know, yeah. So. Doing a little work with now, universities. Do you have kids? It's just fun to you know, be around young people. Yes. And, uh, so kids, yeah. Yes. How many, I um, have one son. He's ah. 22. He oh, okay. um, uh, is an EMT in Boston. Mm -hmm. Um, he, you know, he graduated from Hopkinton High, and okay. uh, he's gonna he's a little younger than, than mine and older than yours. Yes. Uh, Andrew just turned twenty two. <laughs> oh, sorry, two days ago. That's oh, really? Right. I'm thinking. Yeah. Of what yeah. year did he graduate? Two thousand fifteen. Okay, so Mark was twenty fourteen. Okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, they were a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So he's yes, he's living EMT, in a tea. Good for him. Well, and he's go going to go back and get his paramedic. Um, okay. He really likes it, um, mm -hmm. really loves the job. That's and he awesome. likes it. He's busy. Yeah, he's busy. And yeah. he'd like to be a firefighter. Yeah. Oh, and great. being a paramedic is, yes. a, is a way to do that. Absolutely. Um, what a wonderful thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. so he picked up a lot of giving from his mom. But yeah, I think so. <laughs> I think giving so. in I lots like, of ways. I like to think so. Although, I, very, fairly frequently, he and my husband would look at me as I was running out to yet another meeting. <laughs> <laughs> where, where are you going tonight? Yeah, my, my family looks at me like that, too. Oh, yeah. a, you know. I just think it's important. I, I do. I think it's really important to give back and to be part of the community. Mm -hmm. I have seven siblings. I grew up in western Massachusetts. Okay. That's why you knew so much about Pioneer Valley. Yes, yes. <laughs> Seriously, my sister lives in Amherst, and mm. my other siblings live in West Springfield. And um, I had the opportunity in the last uh, 
18 years or so to write both my mother and my father's obituaries. I'm sorry. And thank you, but I, I think in both of them, I started listing out the, what they did in the community. Yeah. And you think people, you know, my, my mother did not work outside the home, mm -hmm. but the list was this long. You know, of things that she did and volunteering and, and you know, mm -hmm. she, especially once all the kids were out of the house, right. she did even more. And that's a time when you almost can because, you right. know, I, we, we all remember being in the throes of yes. raising kids yes. and if you're working and so mm -hmm. forth. Yes. And, you know, I certainly, I did a tiny bit, but I, you know, yes. was focused on the family and so forth. But really, it's a time when you, when your kids are older. Um, and it mm -hmm. also helps you kind of give them some space right. so that you get involved in other things. And, yes. and it's a great time now with kids yes. you know, off and gone and yes. still you know, healthy enough to be running around. Good. <laughs> Good. <laughs> you know? But that's so awesome. Yeah. I mean, and this, we just finished Thanksgiving. Yeah. So, you know, Giving Tuesday happens immediately afterwards, you know, and you go through like, you know, Black Friday, you know, Small Business Saturday, Cyber Monday, then Giving Tuesday. Yeah. But then we, in this town, tomorrow is a huge weekend about like giving. Yes. And so, you know, you mentioned Hoppy and Drug doing their annual thing. It's not, it's their way of giving back to the community, having Santa Claus and doing yes. pictures in their open house. Um, the but holiday the stroll. HPTA took on, mm -hmm. on the uh, home tour boutique right. tomorrow. Oh, right. And at mm -hmm. the same time, the chamber has the, the holiday stroll going. Yes. And then tomorrow night, the Diwali group from the uh, South Southeastern Asian, Asian Circle, Circle of Hoppington, Hoppington are doing their first thing, trying to embrace the community. And then over in the last couple of years, they've grown to like 200 members. Wow. Sunday morning, HEF is doing like a scavenger hunt looking for the elf. <laughs> He's not here. And then, of course, we have Shopping for the Cause that we sponsor um, for the fifth year. Yeah. And At the Community Hopkinton uh, Center for the Arts. And it's the benefactor this year yeah. is the Hopkinton Center for the Arts. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I can't even tell you the tremendous response from sponsors this year yeah. and vendors. I mean, Great. it is going to so be... It's going to be fun shopping. It's going to be a but, packed house yeah. at Shopping for the Cause with vendors. We have wine and nibbles and music. And we, and Steve Spector's going to play a bit. He's yes. already been out, checked out the grand yeah. piano. Okay. We'll so it's just a nice, just yes. to come, bring friends, just roll in, well, shop yeah, around. Really I bought good. a few tickets already, oh, and, and uh, <laughs> yeah, we hope to come. Actually, yeah. I, I love going there. Yeah. You can yeah. always find something unique, 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 yeah. unique and that Often yes. artisan, handmade, right. or right. some of the jewelry artisans from HCA will be there, and um, but they pottery. HCA has had in their gallery, and when we had the show a couple of weeks ago with um, Chris Walden from HCA. Mm -hmm. She had one of the wreaths out that um, oh, right. Dale yes. Daney had done yes. with a bicycle. Well, now they're all out in the gallery and they're silent auction. So like Pam Litchfield who was here uh -huh. and I'm, right. I'm taking her yes. wreath making thing this afternoon. Oh, you um, are. Good for the, you. <laughs> uh, they're all out in the gallery. You can go mm -hmm. make bids. But mm -hmm. during Shopping for a Cause about 5 o'clock, they're going to actually announce all the winning bidders. Oh, and oh, so that will happen okay. during our event. And out in that area too, we'll also have T a couple tables for the Relay for Life kids who are actually going to be shopping, uh, wrapping people's gifts, whether they bought them at Shopping for the Cause or any or of these other events, or if you have them in your closet at home. <laughs> they're willing to wrap everything. I mean, some woman last year showed up with like a garbage bag and just plopped it on. <laughs> what a great uh, idea, though. So I like, <laughs> gotta go, unfortunately. And, this and is we're, so and we're trying fun. to embrace like the other charities too. So yeah. there's a Tree for Project just because. There's Relay for Life. There's a, another nonprofit. So. We're all here. And We're all good. here. And it's, it's going to be a fun weekend. It is. So everybody just get out and enjoy. And uh, check out HoppingtonGives.org. HoppingtonGivesOnline.org. Yes. We'll post it up there. Thank you Thank so much you for so coming. Much. I this really so appreciate fun. it. I'm all Thanks. excited about the weekend now. I know. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Thank everybody, you. for joining us. Thank Happy you. holidays. So what are the signs of an opioid overdose, and how can I recognize that somebody is experiencing one? Well, they're actually pretty easy to spot. A person who is experiencing an overdose may appear confused and have a decreased level of consciousness and alertness. They also may have constricted pupils. When you see somebody who's experiencing an overdose, the number one most important thing to do first is to call 911. Next, do rescue breathing. And finally, take out your naloxone kit and administer the naloxone. 
Naloxone comes in an easy to use package with instructions for how to use it. Each box of naloxone may look different. They're all very easy to use and you do not need medical training in order to use it. So who should have nasal naloxone? Well, everybody should have it to help a loved one who may be suffering from a substance abuse disorder or just to help a stranger in need. Obtaining naloxone is easy. You can obtain it from your doctor, from a pharmacy standing order, or from any of the Department of Public Health sites. By just following these simple steps, you might just be able to save a life. My son had a drinking problem at college. I'm glad a friend suggested Al-Anon Family Groups. Is someone's drinking troubling you? You might be surprised at what you can learn in an Al-Anon Family Group from people just like you. Call 1-888-4-AL-ANON or go to al .org. Hi folks, today we're gonna to talk about Christmas tree and outside decoration safety. According to the US Fire Administration, one third of home Christmas tree fires are caused by electrical problems and one quarter start when the tree is placed too close to a heat source. The State Fire Marshal Peter Oskowski advises the following Christmas tree safety tips. When selecting a natural tree, look for the freshest tree available. Some ways to test if a tree is fresh is, run your hand down the branch, and if no needles fall off, that's good. Also, you could take a needle and bend it. If it bends without breaking in half, it's fresh. Let's talk about caring for that new tree. Make a fresh cut about one inch from the bottom of the trunk, which will improve the water absorbency, and set a schedule each day to water that tree. When placing your tree, you want to purchase a good quality stand that's going to take the weight of the tree. Make sure you place it away from any exits or heat sources. When decorating your tree, try to switch over to these new LED lights. They burn much cooler than the older style lights. Make sure the lights are not touching the needles, and when you leave the house or go to bed, make sure you turn the lights off. Otherwise, purchase a timer. Once the Christmas season is over, take advantage of the community curbside pickup and dispose of your tree. The State Fire Marshal also has the following safety tips for outside holiday decorations. Use lights that are rated for outside use only. And if possible, try to switch over to those LED lights. They burn much cooler and they're safer for the environment. Use electrical connection protectors to keep water out. Use GFI outlets to plug all lights and decorations into. Do not overload your circuits. For example, a 15 amp circuit supports up to 1800 watts and a 20 amp circuit supports up to 2400 watts. When hanging lights and decorations, consider using clips instead of nails and staples. Finally, once the holidays are over, bring in all the lights and decorations to avoid any winter hazards and bad lucks from your neighbors.